Well everyone, I did something for the very first time in a very long time. I installed one of the newest versions of software on one of the oldest supported devices. So obviously I do this with iPhones and Androids all the time, but MacBooks is something that I usually don't do. And I went and bought a ton of MacBooks recently just because of macOS Big Sur. And I installed macOS Big Sur, which is macOS 11, the latest and greatest that Apple just made on a 2013 MacBook Air. Now, this specific MacBook that I have is I think the base tier model with four gigs of RAM. So it's pretty cool that we still have support for a device like this where my iPhone has more RAM than this thing and I think it's even more powerful than the MacBook Air to be honest. Now a big thing with this MacBook Air was I picked it up for like less than $200 fully working except for the display so the screen doesn't work but I plugged it into a monitor so I can get the experience of it and I can tell you okay there's two different ways of going about saying this. I think that probably ever since macOS Catalina a lot of these MacBooks have had a lot of issues but the fact that Apple is still supporting these type of older MacBooks on the newest support on their software is pretty impressive in and of itself. Now, I'm going to tell you before I even get too deep in this video, do not install macOS Big Sur on your MacBook as you're just asking for a can of worms to be open and a ton of problems. It's just not worth it. But I will tell you from just messing around with it for about an hour or two and filming that video I did the other day, I don't even think it's really that bad. But coming from a device that I have right now, my Retina MacBook Pro, that's on macOS Mojave. This is like a really good setup for me. I like Mojave a lot. I don't really like Catalina, but Big Sur, there's some cool things with it. There's some bad things with it. And a lot of them have to do with the software itself, but I didn't really find it being too buggy or too bogged down on this MacBook Air, which was really surprising. When I was maneuvering around with it, Actually, when I was updating it, it did get pretty loud. The fans ramped up like crazy, but that's with like any other update I've ever had on any MacBook. Even when I'm doing like a time machine backup, sometimes it gets really hot and loud. And then when I went and logged in, actually, that was actually pretty surprising. I mean, it looked pretty responsive. There is a new UI, a new layout, which is cool. And I already kind of like it a little bit more. However, I will tell you the wallpaper that they put with it, I liked it at first, but now that I look at it, it just kind of looks too childish in a way. It kind of reminds me of like some LG wallpaper, you know, LG's theme is very like kind of like cartoonish. And I think Apple maybe didn't even realize it, but I, you know, that's an afterthought. And one thing that was really surprising to me was just how responsive everything was on this MacBook Air. Now it was still pretty glitchy. I think if you might have seen my last video I did where I was talking about the top features or whatever, you might have seen that there were a lot of glitchiness. You, there were a lot of glitches going on. So if I was going and like, you know, minimizing a tab or opening up something, that video was filmed entirely on a MacBook Air. This one or my other one, I don't remember, but this one is a 2013 one and it, it did seem pretty glitchy. But if I hadn't have known this was a 2013 MacBook Air, I would have assumed maybe it was like a 2014 Retina MacBook Pro or 2015 Retina MacBook Pro. Just because I already had this connotation of like, oh, the newest software on the oldest MacBook is horrible. It's going to be very slow and laggy. Now, everything that I tested on it, like I said, it was kind of glitchy, but it worked. And I probably wouldn't have known that it was that bad or if it was whatever. I think the biggest complaint that I've seen with macOS Big Sur are probably app crashes as well as app compatibility. Sometimes, you know, apps just don't want to open. With Catalina, they switched over to that 64-bit, not allowing 32-bit apps. And I think people are still experiencing that with macOS Big Sur. So that's another thing to keep in mind. But everything else about the UI was very responsive, like I stated. When I was opening apps, when I was, you know, going to the app store and going here and going here, they opened up perfectly fine. They did take a while to open up, but that's because this is an older MacBook. If I were to go and do, you know, heavier intensive things, if I were to go and like, you know, do Final Cut Pro on this thing and do all sorts of Photoshop and all that stuff, then this thing will get super bogged down and the fans will ramp up. But for light web browsing, for doing the things that I've done in this video, for like writing whatever, writing docs and doing FaceTime calls and all that stuff, like this MacBook is still super responsive in my opinion, which is very impressive. And to be honest, I was expecting this thing to be like super buggy, super bogged down, not being able to do anything. But I really got another, you know, viewpoint on this thing when I was actually messing with it. And surprisingly, it was actually pretty good. Now, would I personally use Mac OS Big Sur on my MacBooks? Absolutely not. There's going to be a lot of bugs with it, a lot of problems, but I just want to tell you guys, even though this is kind of like a rehaul of the way it looks and basically everything about macOS, I think these older MacBooks will probably end up kind of being the same as it was on Catalina. So Catalina wasn't perfect either, but I think it's probably going to be a step up in terms of you maybe like the looks and the UI and everything, but I think the stability might stay the same, which is not a good thing. I want the stability to go up, but again, we're on like the second beta, so who knows what's going to happen by the official release. But I will tell you, for the people who own these older MacBooks, including the older MacBook Pros, the Retina ones, 
I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. You know, I could be totally wrong, but I will keep you guys updated. I was expecting it to be pretty bad, but it really wasn't. It was just glitchy, but I was already kind of expecting that. It didn't crash on me. The MacBook didn't reboot. None of the apps crashed on me, luckily. But again, maybe if I used it for like 50 days or three months, maybe I'll find out something else. But I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. I'll, I'll also install this on my 2013 Retina MacBook Pro. So you guys can kind of get a better idea on how both these compare, but that's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So me so much if you guys get hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.